Good morning. I hope you all are staying warm. I know several people are struggling with electricity this morning and they won't be able to join us. Um, Mother Nature has sent us another curveball, and so I hope that everyone is safe and warm and in a good place. We will be recording this so that if you have friends that wanted to attend and they're not able to due to the situ current situation of our weather, we will be recording this. I want to welcome everybody to our Homegrown Virtual Academy PLC that is hosted with Robin Bagsby. The Digital Learning Unit is great to be here, and we are happy to have everyone join us. If you want to follow along with us as we are presenting, you can just follow along with the screen. We also have the slides that are um, in, in the chat below, and when we send the recording out afterwards, we will also include the slides there as well. I hope that everybody enjoys this time together, and I'm gonna hand it over to Rainbow. Good morning, everyone. If you could pop into the chat and just let me know how you're doing this morning. How are you feeling? Are we working from home? I love working from home. <laughs> okay, um, so Amanda, as people are joining, can you um, let them in the room? Yeah, you bet. Sorry, I just actually disabled it so we wouldn't get notified every time. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. so we're going to get started with our Homegrown Virtual Academy PLC for February. And from our December meeting, we had taken the responses from people and looked at the topics that they wanted to talk about the most. And um, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna talk about um, creating class norms. We're gonna talk about engagement. We're gonna talk about student agency and we're gonna talk about motivation. Um, so I'm your facilitator, Rainbow Bagsby. Um, I know some of you are joining for the first time, and so I'm going to continue to introduce myself every time. If you'd like to reach me, my email is rainbow.bagsby at ade.arkansas.gov. And today, um, like I said, right now we're doing the introduction to the February PLC. We'll start with creating synchronous session norms and procedures. Um, we'll jump into best practices for creating engagement, student agency, and motivation, and then we'll end with some announcements and an exit ticket. So the first thing I want to do is to give everyone the opportunity to help steer this PLC. Um, this is for your benefit, and I want to hear your voice as we're planning these. So if you'd like to join a consulting committee is what I'm calling it, um, for me to be able to bounce things off of you as we're planning, um, here's the QR code and a bit.ly link. It'll take you to a form where you can sign up to be on that committee. Are there any questions about the committee? I'm gonna give y'all time to access that. There you go. So that link was added to the chat. So I'm going to continue on. First, let me just ask, is there anyone who would be interested in joining this committee and signing up? Yes. Uh, how, hello, how are you doing? I was wondering Hi. about it. How often do you all meet? Hmm, I don't think we'll necessarily meet uh, very often. However, I would like to work asynchronously some and uh, work via email. We may meet a few times, so I don't think it would be very time consuming. 
Okay, that's what I was wondering because I have so much going on. But I, I would like to. All right, awesome. To, so I'm trying to feel this out right now. Yeah. Scott okay. has also, Scott Wright, who's joined us, has also said he's interested as too. Interested awesome. As well. Thank you. And, and feel free to. And I just up want you guys. Anytime. Well, and I'm also wanting to say there too, um, I understand that for you to say, no to this means you can say yes to other things. We just want to have a voice from you guys um, as we go forward because we've seen that you guys have enjoyed this and we're going to be planning for when we, I'm imagining that we're going to continue to have this opportunity in the fall and we just want to make sure we're meeting the needs that you have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we started, All right, I got it. you got it? So yes, when we, ma'am, I have it filled out. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. When we started the Homegrown Virtual PLC, um, I created the objectives on my own. And, and I want to kind of hear your thoughts on those and see if there's anything there that you would like to that you would like to take away or if there's anything there that you would like to add, because I'm going to consider these as we're planning the agenda for the meetings. So the norms that we have right now are network with virtual academy teachers, collaborate with your peers, troubleshoot what doesn't work, identify what works, and then support your peers and find support from your peers. Are there any other needs that you have that um, we should include as an objective? I guess we could say making um, um, online more interactive. That would be my. Okay, so I'm going to write that more down. interactive for the students. Anyone else? Making, uh, yes, making online activities more interactive. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so it sounds, it seems like everybody is pretty much happy with what we have. I will try to incorporate the interactivity into the objectives for the next time. Um, if you have any thoughts later um, of something that you think we should add or take away, please feel free to reach out to me and we can get that done. So the first thing we're gonna talk about today is creating norms. Um, and what I mean by norms is something like this. So when I was a teacher, online, when I taught online, um, I would have norms that I would cover at the beginning of every single synchronous session. And just like with um, classroom rules that you have posted, posted in a brick and mortar classroom, you want to um, constantly go over these with the students. So you don't want to have too many, but somewhere between three and seven, I wouldn't do more than seven. Um, but my only rules were mute your microphone, uh, turn your camera on, and use chat with permission. And I, I assume that the norms you would create would be different depending on your specific situation, your specific enrollments and your specific environment. And so this is just an example of what I used to do. Um, so I'm interested in what you do. So this Jamboard has six slides. I only want you to look at the first three slides and answer those prompts or prompts. And those are gonna give everybody ideas. I'm gonna skip to that page, but here's the QR code and here's the bit.ly link. And Amanda's gonna drop that link into the chat as well. So you can access the Jamboard. Sorry, I'm not Well, maybe I'll get it. Okay. Thanks. I'm going to also change the slides so I can pull up this Jamboard. If you need help, just let me know. So I'm going to kind of um, show you where things are on here. At the top, you have uh, ways to turn the page. So right now we're on page one. And when you're ready to go to page two, you can do that. Um, by clicking the uh, right arrow over here. 
you can use a sticky note and type on the sticky note. Um, you can incorporate pictures. You can use the pen tool. You can type text. Um, so there's several ways to use this. <clears throat> so as you're figuring this out, hey. yeah. Yeah. As you figure this out, I'm going to uh, just go through these and read you the prompts. So the first prompt is, how did you create norms for your synchronous sessions? The second prompt is what worked and what didn't work when you or your class created your norms. And the third prompt is what three norms would you recommend for this PLC? If you want, you could put your name on it. You don't have to and where you're from. So I'm going to be the first to admit that I created the norms all by myself and didn't give students any voice. Um, and what that does is it doesn't create student buy-in and they have no like ownership of those norms. And I think when you do it with the students, even though that's not how I did it, you'll probably have them making sure other students follow those norms as well as themselves. I was really interested to see uh, this one. We printed out signals to show our students such as when to mute, unmute, come back together. That is a really good idea. I like to use hand signals a whole lot and gestures. Rainbow, did we lose you for a minute? I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yes. I was reading everybody's stuff. Sorry. <laughs> I'll move on and look at prompt oh. two. <laughs> uh, students were at, uh, good at turning off microphones, but it took more reinforcements to get them on to keep cameras on. Another issue that I have had is not only having their cameras on, but also making sure it's not just like their hair, you know, that it's centered on their face. So that's something that we stress as well. Yes, reminders.
Yes, kids want to share. <laughs> So the good thing about this is if I'm going too fast for you and you still want to add stuff, you'll still have access to this. And so will people who aren't here. So people that are watching this recording later are going through the slideshow. So I want to make sure that y'all know that y'all can come back to this if you didn't get to put everything you wanted. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all had a cell Zoom session. That's fun. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to move on to slide three or prompt three. What, what three norms would you recommend for this PLC? Mic's off. So I'm going to put these in a pile because they're all the same one. Number two, stay on topic. That's a really good one too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and the other one is be quiet when others are speaking. Don't interrupt when someone is speaking and mute your mic when the speaker is speaking. Share out the chat notes if people contribute on there. I'm so glad you pointed that out and I want to show you something and hopefully it's gonna share my screen when I change, change tabs. So on the uh, research and technology website, and this is ADE, the ADE website, um, we have a digital learning unit website here. And if you go down to professional development and, so it's the third thing on uh, the Act virtual academy plc is the third thing on here and what i've been doing is i've been adding uh the recordings the agenda the meeting chat and the slideshow so you can access it later if you ever have to miss a meeting or you ever want to refer back to it and so i felt like that chat piece was important to include as well to know what people are commenting I'm going to come back. Don't let the slender sleep get us off task. Share freely and openly. I love that one. Share chat notes, share ideas if you had them and use chat. Wonderful. If you want to add to this later, feel free to do so. We're going to move on. <clears throat> so I'm not going to go over these resources with you, but I've gathered some articles and some uh, some things to share with you that you can research later if you're interested. And these are just processes for recruiting buy-in by forming norms collaboratively. The first um, article that I provide is really for PLCs to form their norms collaboratively, but you could modify this process for your classroom. Uh, the, other, the other article in the top right is the students hold each other accountable if you create social contracts. And I think this is the student version of creating norms together um, with your classroom students. And then we also have community agreements. And these are actually examples of those agreements or contracts that you might want to create with your students after you collaboratively create those norms. And so you have the QR codes in the bit.ly so you can return to that if you would like to access those resources. Um, they've also put it in the chat. The next thing um, that we're going to talk about is engagement. So catching the student's attention and keeping it. I got really geeked out with this last night and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. So according to the UDL guidelines, information that is not attended to that does not engage learners cognition is in fact inaccessible. So if you're, they're not engaged, they're checked out. You're not, they're not going to pick up anything you're saying. Um, and here's a link to the UDL guidelines and also a QR code to those guidelines uh, if you don't know where those are. And so as I was looking over these topics that um, you all had requested it during our first meeting, 
I noticed that it seemed to me like the framework that addresses every single one of these topics or concerns is the UDL framework. And so I'm going to skip over to that and, and have you take a look at this. How many of you have ac actually studied UDL, you know what it is, and you try to use it? I'm so glad that you have, uh, you, most of you have heard of this before. It's very excellent. I mean, it doesn't, you're going to have to apply the principles and guidelines to your own content, but it gives you examples of everything. Um, so for the engagement piece, um, the idea of universal design for learning is to provide your students with multiple means of engagement provide multiple means of representation and provide multiple means of action and expression. And this helps um, access, this helps them build or construct their own understanding, and this helps them internalize um, these, the content that you're studying. And the goal of UDL is to create expert learners who are purposeful and motivated, resourceful and knowledgeable and strategic and goal-directed. Um, so I'm going to skip back to the slideshow here, <clears throat> and we're going to move forward. So I really am leaning on you all a lot today to share what you do and what works and what doesn't work. And so we're going to go back to the Jamboard, and we're going to answer the prompt on page four. It's prompt number four. And this is asking... What are some tools and or strategies that you use to engage learn or to engage your students? Nearpod activities and taking notes, videos and presentation mode, asking for their input and open-ended questions. on-site opportunities, field experiences, podcasts, Nearpod, Kahoot, students screen share incentives and special guests. So I like some of the interactive um, tools that you're using and I actually wanna make a list of these. So I've already heard Nearpod, I've heard Kahoot. Amanda, what's your favorite? Hello, Pear Deck. Yep, Pear Deck. Is that what we're, <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> um, so Nearpod, Pear Deck, Genially, there you go, Kirsten, uh, and ClassLink are all very similar in that you can upload your slideshows and and add interactivity, comprehension checks, and um, games and stuff like that. And um, so those are all really good. I like Kahoot. Um, that's where more like it's like a quiz type of activity. Another one is called GimKit. That's similar to Kahoot. Flipgrid, good job. Are there any more types of tools that you use that work out for you? iCivics.org. Quizlet. 
Oh, I love FET, Julie. FET simulation, simulators. There's another one called a sketch fab. That's also like 3D images. Word wall. Sandbox. Do y'all know that y'all have access to the Arkansas Digital Sandbox? Ed Puzzle. Study Jam Quizzes. Y'all are on top of it. I hope you're getting ideas from each other um, for things to try out. I think one of the pieces of engagement is also to vary your activities. And so try new things when you can. Okay, coming back, student. I have teachers. a question, excuse me. One. Yes, ma'am. Okay, on some of the things like uh, the GIMP, the gym kit and Quizlet and the, is it Fed simulators? Mm -hmm. Are those free? Mm -hmm. Because I know for us, like we have Nearpod, but we don't have Paradeck, like our school didn't buy it. So I just want to know, ask them, are some of those things free, like the Quizlet and the so, Fed simulator? All of these ha are, have free versions. So we wouldn't put it out there or advocate for it if there wasn't a free version to it. So so like on the uh, the pair deck is free so long, but if you do something after a while, it goes away. So right. is it just like a trial for all of them? Amanda, can you answer that? You can get like, a free account that will last and um, that's just limited. And so it just doesn't have the premium features. And that's not something that goes away. Now, they do offer like three months free premium that gives you all those features. Um, but but the free account is something that's free forever. And there's certain like reports and features in Pear Deck and um, and like the draggable and certain things that you can't do question wise um, mm -hmm. unless you have the premium account. OK. And what about the gym? Uh, the gym kit is the same way. And who who put that on there? Now, at I'm first, not sure on that. At first, gym kit was paid for, but now they have just opened a free version, and so I haven't okay, so. got delved deeply into that. But I think it's comparable to Kahoot, so you might look into that and oh, see okay. what you can do with it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the one when I was nerding out last night. So student agency. I know what student agency is, but sometimes people don't know. Like if you haven't heard of it before, it's something that you can't just figure out. I don't feel like. But um, so the definition of student agency is the capacity of individuals to act independently and make their own free choices. So uh, that would be the students have that capacity to act independently and make their own free choices. Going back to the universal design for learning, uh, one of the guidelines states that those teachers and settings that address self-regulation explicitly will be most successful in applying the UDL principles through modeling and prompting in a variety of methods. And so, I just wanted to look up some synonyms of agency to try to help illustrate what it means. And so these, all these are synonyms um, of that, that verb or that noun, power, force, action, a vehicle, influence, activity, and channel. When I think of students being able to do that, I get so excited. And I was thinking that engagement, if you get them engaged, that's half the battle. But when you add that student agency to where they can um, drive their self where they're going, you have empowered your students. So I wouldn't set the bar at engagement. I would say our goal would be empowerment. So we have to first get their attention and then we have to get them operating on their own. Um, and so I had another um, brainstorm and I just wanted to uh, map this out for you. So provide multiple means of engagement, 
representation and action and expression, and you'll have expert learners who are purposeful and motivated, resourceful and knowledgeable, and strategic and goal-directed. Mm -hmm. It does take a while to build their confidence. So this is prompt number five on our Jamboard. And I would like to know, what are some ways that you foster student agency in your class? So as you're writing, I'm going to start reading some of these. Cell Zoom, so social emotional learning. On-site open office times for students to Zoom. Awesome. Breakout rooms, group projects, clubs, and vertical tutoring or teaching. Very good. I try to do a lot of front loading each week and model it like my UCA courses. I have turned into a learning facilitator instead of the stage on the stage on the stage. Um, when the students need help, I refer them to the information in our something. Listen to students, let them guide discussions. Encourage risk taking and the idea that it's okay to make mistakes. We cannot learn without making mistakes. I compliment great attempts in improvising with art science. We look at student exemplars and frequently miss questions. Each synchronous lesson starts with a share time. Okay. I'm going to move on, um, but remember, you can still add to this if you want to. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to talk about is motivation. There's two types of motivation, intrinsic, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So intrinsic motivation is the motivation that a person has inside of them to the, their own uh, motivation. Extrinsic motivation is what a teacher can call the motivation a teacher can cause a student or from an outside source. Um, so looking back at UDL, there is a guideline or a checkpoint that says promote expectations and beliefs that optimize motivation. And so the examples that they provided was to provide prompts, reminders, guides, rubrics, checklists that focus on self-regulatory goals like reducing the frequency of aggressive outbursts in response to frustration, increasing the length of on-task orientation in the face of distractions, elevating the frequency of self-reflection and self-reinforcements, providing coaches, mentors, or agents that model the process of setting personally appropriate goals that take into account both strengths and weaknesses, and then support activities that encourage self-reflection and identification of personal goals. So this time, as we consider motivation, I'd like you to go to prompt six on page six of our Jamboard. And this prompt asks, 
how do you instill extrinsic or develop intrinsic motivation for your students? Students have to buy into the subject. They have to be uh, want to learn the information. And that's so true. Praise students for effort, not just right answers. Praise given when expectations are met. Praise students for effort, not just right answers. We developed sticker vaults for the students. They earn stickers by meeting individual goals. I'm switching to badges and buzz. Students earn badges for improvement, turning in work on time and going above and beyond. That's a really good one. Praise for great interaction and work, just creating a loving, welcoming atmosphere when the kids wanna be there and, and participate. Weekly checklists, pacing guides, providing student choice. Give students opportunities to express themselves and what they learn through reflection. This helps them connect to the learning through their own thoughts and ideas. I will guide them, but the ability to, sorry, it cut off. These are all very good answers. My students ask me to mail their parents when they do a great job because our parents don't read the emails. Hmm. Very good. Praise specific skills and tasks, not the general good job. Yes, be specific, give that specific feedback. It sounds like we do a lot of praising students. So there's a few things that I wanted to let you know about in case you haven't heard about it already. So, and actually, Amanda, you're in here. Do you wanna talk about this? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we have deal days coming up. So every third Thursday, um, we have a, a lunch and learn type session where we really just want to share tools and resources that we feel like are things that are going to be helpful for you to use in the classroom and helpful for you to use with digital learning. So the next one that we have coming up, Stephen Walker, he's an expert in, in Nearpod, and he's going to be doing a session on how to use Nearpod. And just uh, if you've not used it, I would encourage you to kind of take a look at it because it's a really great engagement tool. So that's what we have coming up on and, and every month. And so what we do after that is we'll record these. If we know that like you're not, you may not be available at that time. So if you want to just go ahead and register, um, then what I'll do is send out a recording and a link to the slides after. So you can still get all those materials in case and come back to that. So try to make it accessible. So I'm gonna show you where this is at because it's on the same website as our Virtual Academy PLC. And it's, I think just above it. So the drop everything and learn, um, these are the sessions we've already done. And we, these are short 30 minute sessions and you can come here to access the recordings. Um, Kirsten made a good point. We also put them on our YouTube channel that, that we're just starting off with. 
And then you can sign up here, but I also, we also have a link where you can register for those um, that someone's about to put in the chat or already has. Another thing I wanted to um, let y'all know about if you have not already heard about it, um, the Digital Learning Unit has started a podcast and it's called Living in Beta Mode. And so for Digital Learning Day, or we made a whole week out of it, um, we launched our first episode and Kirsten just put that in the chat and it's about living in beta mode. And we have a whole series coming out. Um, so if you want to you know, subscribe to those. Uh, you can get some good information. We have guest speakers that we're going to be bringing in and talking about um, things that have to do with digital learning. You can also go back to that professional development page and our uh, podcasts and our YouTube will be um, showcased here as well. So here's our exit ticket for today. Um, there's a QR code and a bit.ly and then someone's also going to add that to um, the chat as well. We finished a little bit early today, uh, but I would really appreciate your feedback on um, how you think things are think things are going. If you would like to facilitate a meeting or share something that you're an expert on um, and just you know, get some feedback so we can continuously approve, uh, improve and meet your needs. Rainbow, I wanted to add, and I, um, again, that we won't be meeting next month. Thank you. We're going to skip March um, for spring break. Going. So we'll be back. Um, we'll have another one on April 28th. It's always going to be on the fourth Thursday, or I'm sorry. Yeah, the fourth Thursday of every month. And we'll hang back if you have questions. Amanda, do you have the link to the slideshow that we could pop in there one more time in case they didn't get it at the beginning because they came in late later? Yes, yeah, so sorry. Let me grab it real quick. Just a second. Pulling it up now. Oops. Hang on. I have it. I have I'll pop the Desi website in there too. So there's the slides. Awesome. Okay, here is the Desi website. Now that's got like everything on it, right? <laughs> yeah, much. it does. Yeah, it has everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's your one-stop you, shop. <laughs> did you, um, at the top of that PDE page is our catalog that we're putting out for the summer. Um, we're, those are the choices that your ESCs will look at to offer. So not all of those choices on the catalog may be offered by your local education service cooperative. But if you're um, interested in some of those uh, PL, or offerings that we have, we can make it specific to your virtual school and we can work with your administrator to give you guys the opportunity to enroll in those courses. We're building them so they are offered three different ways. Most of the education service cooperatives are asking for us to do it face to face, but we are offering it as an asynchronous course, as a synchronous virtual course where we can do it through Zoom or it can be offered through your local um, um, ESC with your specialist that's assigned to your area. 
So just get with your administrator if you think that maybe you guys are interested in either the asynchronous or the synchronous virtual course, or you would like us to actually come to the location that your virtual academy is, um, is the location, even though you may be working from home to do your teaching. Um, and we can do it that way. So there's a lot of different options and we wanna support you all in any way possible. Most of the options that we're offering are designed for blended learning, but they're very easy to pivot to online, totally online. Um, and it was done through that lens because we know so many teachers at some point are going to be an online teacher because of AMI days, i.e. today, um, or um, other, other situations where they may have students that um, need to be able to access virtually for an extended period of time due to health issues or other concerns that they cannot be at school. So we have 11, right? Yeah, 11 to choose from, 10 that are six hour um, and one that's a three hour, but again, we can adjust those. We can cut them down. We can, we can break it up to what you need. So if you don't wanna do six hours all in one day, if that doesn't sound super fun virtually, let us know, <laughs> we can break it up. <laughs> we, we had a lot of different feedback whenever, um, some of y'all may have attended some of our sessions back then when we were doing that during the summer and it was you know, a variety of things going on. And, and I love to hear how some people really did that very successfully. And we had some really great sessions, but some people that was very, very long <laughs> to be in there for six hours consecutively. Did anybody do six hour Zooms in 2020 or 2021? Mm. No? You guys looked out. I'm seeing shaking heads. Wow. I did a few. I did a few. Let's give them the PTSD. <laughs> right? <laughs> are, you, are you stressing? I had a lot of days of that because we would do back-to-back -back Zooms. And so, yeah. Um, but hey, it, it can work. It's just the way that you break it up. Honestly, I've, I've attended a lot of great ones that way. You just have to, like you said, yes, Kirsten, having breaks. You got to have, you got to do breaks and you got to have independent learning and you can't just be sit and get for six hours <laughs> on a Zoom. Yep. Yes, that's right. Application and independent work will be built into Very clear, not six hours of direct teach. That would be awful, honestly. Um, I really did hear of people doing that. And some people, they uh, they were really, really stressed out about some, because you know they had to pivot to virtual right then. And it was like, they were gonna have to cancel their sessions and they went ahead and carried it on, but they didn't really have time to prepare for the breakouts and all of that. So it was six hours sit and get Zooms and you know, you're doing what you can, but that probably was rough <laughs> on both sides. That's when I bought a standing desk, just FYI. I bet that really did boost a lot of that because you had to move, you had to be able to, I noticed that like I would, I had to have a chair that I could move around because I had to be, able, it was constant just sitting, you know, yeah, you needed to be able to have some movement, some walking. You have one of those treadmills underneath, have you seen those? Yeah, yeah. I can see that being a disaster for me. Um, I, it's probably good for the person that's in the Zoom that's walking, but for the person that's watching the person walking in Zoom, I actually got a little motion sickness watching it. <laughs> I would think that that would be very distracting for me. Okay, so some uh, Elsie Myers made the treadmill desk popular on TikTok. I'll have to check that out. It's uh -huh. hard for me. I tried to stand up. We have standing desks at the virtual academy, and my mouse hand doesn't quite work if I'm moving. So I have to be still to type or to use my mouse. But if I'm reading or listening, I can walk. <laughs> right. You find how you can multitask with, with things. 